Hello, friend, and welcome to the study on Mormonism. I'm your host, Benjamin Fagan, and today we, as I said, will be looking at Mormonism, the Church of Latter-day Saints, and their fundamental beliefs. Now, as we examine these things, if you like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't be afraid to put them in the comment section below. So let's get into this. Let's look at Mormonism. Now, a common belief in Mormonism is they take a non-Trinitarian stance. Well, let me prove from the Bible how this is wrong. First of all, in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6, you cannot get this confused. This is a prophecy of Jesus in Isaiah 9, verse 6, which says that a child will be born, a son will be given, his name will be Counselor, the uh, Father, Everlasting Father. And so here we have a prophecy of Jesus Christ being connected with the Counselor, which is the Holy Spirit, the Everlasting Father, the Father God, and of course, Logos, the Word, Jesus. And so clearly we have Trinity here in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. We go to Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. Jehovah speaks to Moses and says, I am. What did Jesus say in John chapter 8, verse 58? Well, Jesus said unto them, before Abraham was, I am. There, Jehovah says, I am. Jesus says, I am the I am. Jesus is God. And Acts chapter 17, verse 29, and Romans chapter 1, verse 20, and in Colossians chapter 2, verse 9, we have the word Godhead used three times in three passages. A nice little evidence in the scriptures of Trinity? I think so. I think it's nice. Now, in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, we read about in the creation account, we have God created, and God spoke, and it was created, and the Spirit moved upon the waters. Here you have the Father God, the Creator. There we have also the Word, God spoke, Logos, Jesus Christ. And finally, we have the Spirit moving upon the waters, the Holy Spirit, all three present at the time of creation, Trinity, all creating and working together. In Luke chapter 3, verses 21 to 22, we have Trinity at Jesus' baptism. There Jesus was baptized, and God the Father said, This is my Son, Jesus Christ, in whom I am well pleased. And at the time of that baptism, the dove in the form of a Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus Christ. You have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit at the baptism. Finally, Jesus said about baptism that we should go and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. And finally, in 2 Corinthians 13, 14, and in 1 Peter 1, 2, we have three persons named Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit. Now, another belief is some sort of weird polytheism. You know, they believe that basically man can ascend to be like God and that man can be God. Is that necessarily true and is that right? Well, I believe that's polytheism. I believe if you can say man can become God, then there must be many man gods, right? Polytheism. Well, the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 to 5, that there is one God, monotheism. And this monotheistic God is visible in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Trinity. In 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 4, this says that there is none other God but one. Galatians 3.20 says God is one. Romans 3.30 says there is one God that justifies. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 6, there is one God that is above all and through all and in all. The next point, which actually connects with the polytheistic point, is the deifying of man, that man can become a God. That is just a repackaging of Satan's old lie in Genesis chapter 3, verses 4 to 5, saying if you eat of the uh, tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that you'll become as gods, knowing good and evil. That's a, so if, if someone says that you can become like a god, that is a lie. That is Satan. Psalm 82, verses 6 to 7. This psalm is an, ar is an arraignment of unjust judges spoken of as gods. See, it says, it talks about in Psalm 82 that he says, well, aren't you gods or Elohim? The rabbinical tradition applied the term gods to those who received the law. The Israelites accepted the Torah only so that the angel of death should have no dominion over them. And so God only has immortality. So how, how does this make sense? How can the Bible say, well, you are as gods? Well, the idea is an application to judges. That's what the context of Psalm 82 is about. Uh, this Elohim word can sometimes be applied to human judges. It's used for one God, uh, Elohim, is used for one God in Psalm 82, verse 1, and used for God's Elohim. So you have God, Hebrew Elohim, and God's Elohim, which that God's Elohim is in reference to the judges. 
Elohim is translated as judges in Exodus 21 verse 6, Exodus 22 verses 8 to 9. Judges may be called Elohim in the sense that judges are representatives of God's sovereignty, not they are God's. In John chapter 10 verses 34 to 38, Jesus seems to make his reply in terms of this tradition. Uh, however, Jesus was God in an altogether different sense than that of Psalm 82 verse 6. And so we cannot use Psalm 82 as, uh, as saying that we are as gods, that we are gods. No, 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 no. Yes, we are judges because we are going to judge the world. Yes, even we're going to judge angels. Paul's letter to the Corinthians tells us that. Finally, the last one I'm going to address is polygamy. Mormonism, Latter-day Saints, they practice what's called polygamy, a man having more than one wife. Is this biblical? Well, yeah, in the past, the um, people in the old days, they used to have more than one wife. But when you study the accounts of these individuals that had more than one wife, there was troubles in the family. And so this was never God's perfect plan. Where was God's perfect plan before sin? It was in the Garden of Eden. Did God make many wives for Adam? He could have. He could have taken more than one rib out of Adam. But he didn't. He took one rib to make one woman for Adam before the advent of sin. It was only until after sins people started taking multiple wives and having all kinds of problems in their family and marriages. So polygamy is wrong. Genesis chapter 2 tells us that God established marriage between one man and one woman. Jesus affirmed this in Matthew chapter 19 verses 4 to 6. He affirmed the original plan, the best plan, before sin ever entered the world. One man, one woman, till death do them part. And so I hope and I pray that this presentation has been beneficial for you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and let me know your comments and criticism down below. God bless you until we study again.